podcast listeners. If you hear my voice right now, I need you to do something for me. I want you to take out your phone or on your computer, go to Apple Podcasts, search for Ask Your Old Head Podcast. You'll see my, my logo, my little picture, my little image there. Find the show. Please rate and write a review. It's a small thing, but it helps others find this work and find what I'm doing here. And it really, really matters, uh, as small as that may seem. So if you could please do that uh, before we get into the show, I very much appreciate it. Thank you for listening. Let's get into it. Peace. Peace. I'm Majestic. My brother, Justice Raji, what's happening, baby? Hey, what's up? What's happening, man? All right. So, well, we're just going to get into it. So we we are six months or so into the Biden administration. And, um, you know, I figured it might be good to just do a check-in on some of the, the, the you know, what's just where that at, what it's looking like. And then, um, yeah, then we'll go into some other things. So do um, you have any... Any particular items? I mean, I know for me, I've been monitoring the infrastructure, you know, that that bill or whatever have you. And, and but I guess maybe you know, what's what's some of your first reactions? And I don't remember what our our first conversation was in total <laughs> about yeah, yeah, about yeah. The president. But what's the, some of your thoughts at this moment, like with like how so, the administration is looking? Yeah. So a couple things. I mean, number one, you know, shout out to Amtrak Joe. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Joe's a real Delaware kind of guy. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And I I mean that in the sense of, in some ways, we probably haven't had a president in some time that actually, you know, is kind of like more connected to, not just the people, because that's vague and doesn't mean anything, <laughs> but more connected to the experience of a variety of people. So when you talk about him catching Amtrak, even if he was catching the Acela, he was still catching Amtrak, right? Mm -hmm. And Joe has always kept it real, you know, between Scranton and Delaware, and then, you know, that whole Philadelphia thing, you know, Joe. So, you know, one thing about this administration is it shows the importance of timing. And that sometimes timing is actually more important than what you think were your previously held principles, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot in government about the idea of what could I get done at the time, right? Not necessarily what were my deeply held principles, what I've been fighting about for 50 years. It's like, yo, you know, it's, it's literally kind of like the art of that, that opportunity, right? And I think that this administration has taken the pressure from the left and the art of opportunity and the, you know, idiocy of our previous president and put that together to try to advance things that actually benefit a wide swath of people. Now, the challenge is because our politics is so separated, right? Um, I think we talked about this recently, but like, before you had news and then you heard the news from your angle, right? Mm -hmm. Now they have news attuned to your angle. So mm -hmm. there's a whole host of news and information given to different people at a different angle to help you reinforce what you already think. So there's like a, a different, a, a difference than like, we, you know, than, than ever before. But I just think like they took a time to be able to help the most people that you possibly could during a pandemic, even if different news uh, outlets aren't sharing it like that. I think that that's what they did. Um, also, another thing I think that they learned the lessons of the Obama administration, like they learned the mistakes that the president made. Now, in some ways you could argue they're, they're making, I don't know if I want to call it mistakes or they're replaying some of the history only because before you had Ben Nelson with the corn husker kickback with the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. And now you got Joe Manchin, right? 
mm-hmm. holding everything up. So you still got people in your own party holding everything up. And I'll say now to everyone that's like, get it done. It's important for the people. Don't care about that. It's like, that's not true. The duty of a president is to count votes or duty of, of the chief of staff or somebody is to count votes, right? Mm-hmm. And whoever, if someone ain't counting votes, they are not a good supporter to an elected official. And you got to wake up every day knowing what can you get done and what can you move forward, right? Mm-hmm within the the realms of reality, right? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. old school term, within the realms of reality, not within the realms of what you want to see, but within the realms of what can happen. And I think, honestly, in my estimation, the Biden administration has done really well trying to get things done in the realm of what you can without trying to push people who aren't easily pushed. And I think when people all start talking about push mansion or make mansion do something, what you're, re- what you're not realizing is that you need Mansion more than Mansion needs you. Yeah. Mansion doesn't need you. He's already got money. <laughs> and you pushing him to do your socialist stuff <laughs> only makes him more likely to lose, which means in the next couple of years, you'll have one less senator that will definitely make it 4951, if not 4852, right? Yeah. So I just think they've done. They've done well with what they could. I think, obviously, I'm still trying to figure out exactly where Madam Vice President fits into a lot of this, right? Mm -hmm. Um, It feels like sometimes they send her on missions. Like, they send her on, like, the toughest missions, right? (laughs) (laughs) Like, they send her to do, they send her to do literally shit that has not been resolved ever. (laughs) Like, like like Central America. (laughs) Right. Somebody needed to handle Central America, like, yo, like, America right? destabilized Central America for the last, like, 50, 60 years. Like, what are you talking about? Solve that. So I think that that's a challenge. Um, but I also honor the fact that she, that the Madam Vice President, not she, because I don't know her like that, but <laughs> the Madam Vice President is willing to take on some stuff to show that she can deal with some of our, our broader challenges. So that those yeah. are my early, early, uh, like yeah. takes and feedback. Yeah, I think for me it's been, you know, um it definitely sort of like a, a person who and who basically wants to get like I need to get some numbers on the board. You know what I mean? Like we're gonna get this COVID bill through, <laughs> we're gonna get this money out in the streets, we're gonna get uh, you know, I'm you know, I'm gonna follow through with getting out of Afghanistan, you know, yeah, whatever, you know, you know what saying, yeah, you know I mean, like. I mean, ain't no easy way, ain't no positive way, I think, in some senses, to, to exit, you know, a war zone. Um, I mean, I guess maybe it's just you try not to have one in the first place, but um, sort of that, yeah, you know I mean, like, um, Steph is going, we're going to go, we going, you know what I'm saying? And people are like, well, what is this? It's like, hey, like, we got to bounce, like, um, and... Then the um, yo, know, they asked Hobie, they said, Do you feel responsible? What happens after this? He was like, No, <laughs> and even though on one level it's kind of like, What you mean, no? It's like, We've been here 20 years, yes. like, what, like, what else am I supposed to like? Everyone says they want out of here, there will be blood, yeah. No, nah, it's gonna be, it's it's not, it's, it's inevitable, right? It, it don't, it could be. Limited, but if if the if the if whatever is happening is some way buttressed by the presence and the threat that U.S. forces present, if they leave, those who are going to want to establish some other rules are going to establish them. You know what I'm saying, or attempt to. And you know this, you know, is you know what's happening in Haiti right now. Um, you know, and I haven't d- dug deep, so I'm not going to comment. But generally, from studying, you know, when a when a when a leader is assassinated, and you know, to those who have who who have ambitions, you know, take their turn, and you know, oh, this might be my moment, and it's gonna be it's gonna be rough, man, and and it's sad, and hopefully, you know, people aren't harmed too much before it gets to some level of stability. Um, and hopefully the situation improves, you know, for people, you know, I, I would say, but, you know, so I think the, 
Um, you know, I remember I also checked just to see, I think the most real, I don't know if it was the Pew, but like his approval rating is like 63%. <laughs> like, like it, I was, uh, you know, tracking it. I thought it was actually sort of hilarious almost. I mean, oh, really ridiculous that like early jobs numbers and it was like, people were really like, oh, see, it was like a month after the first COVID stuff started rolling out. Like, see, the COVID, the money is destroying the economy. I'm like, it's been a month. Are y'all serious? Like, where, where in the history of America could you could you make a realistic understanding of what's happening with like some kind of economic behavior in just a month? You know, and I, you know, I don't necessarily didn't like the, you know, I think the administration was concerned that this recent jobs numbers that just came out were going to be bad and they ended up being you know good or better um you know i just think it's like a general sense of like he's like hey look i'm trying to get some numbers on the board then you know see if we get this infrastructure deal through and then you know i'm ride 2021 out <laughs> hit the vaccine situation you know you know to the to the chagrin or or joy depending on who you ask because some people clearly was like, well, I'm opening up regardless of what <laughs> the vaccine oh, yeah. numbers look like. Yeah. yeah, some people just say outside it's open yeah. versus regardless of what happened. And I mean, but to your point, God, I think here's the thing. It is extremely likely, unless his gamble proves itself to be true, that you put, you know, to use a very crude term, you put money in the street. <laughs> You take care of people and people respond at the voting booth. That that isn't kind of how American voters respond, as much as people think that's how American voters respond. Yeah. But let's assume if that doesn't happen, you're going to have a Republican House and Senate. Which means essentially the president is going to govern by executive order. Mm-hmm. Which is what President Obama ended up governing by for a long time. And it's what President Trump ended up governing by. We really look at it, right? Yeah. yeah. He got very little through. He had to do executive orders. So I, I guess I say that to say, like, you got literally probably another 15 months left, <laughs> right? Like, people got to recognize whatever doesn't get done now ain't going to get done outside of executive order. People don't have to like it, but it's probably political reality. Because by 2022, it shifts, right? And so I think they know that. Again, they're students enough of history. And I, you know, I, th- I do think, you know, while everyone likes the person that runs for office that hasn't been in office, it makes people feel like they're getting new blood, whatever that means. But then also, like we like to have people who aren't politicians, especially America. Actually, the more and more I've been looking, America likes to have this idea of people who aren't politicians. Yeah, we've we've yeah we've established this idea that the person that is a politician isn't a professional at politics. There's some other into some other thing that's called a politician. Right, not a person <laughs> that's done elected officials relatively been an elected official relatively well. Right. Yeah. So let's separate that. But you know, all the people who are in his administration are students of politics and students of history. They know what they have to get done in the time they can get it done to then do the thing they, to, to like actually make a difference for people. And I think that that's, uh, you know, obviously the voting rights bill, the police reform, the challenge is America needs so much, you're not going to get everything done. And then especially with the idea of what I call the human infrastructure bill, which is what so many people are calling for. So essentially, you have a physical infrastructure bill, a human infrastructure bill, a voting rights bill, and a police reform bill, right? I don't know nobody since LBJ that had pushed all that kind of stuff through in two years. And that was because he just stuffed it down people's throats, right? Like, that that wasn't like... Arts, you know, that wasn't like statesmanship. That was pure, like that was like Shaq playing basketball. It wasn't. <laughs> it, it wasn't Kareem with a skyhook, right? right? That, mm-hmm. You know muscle what I mean? So, yeah. yeah, it was just muscle, right? LBJ was a straight muscle when it came to that, and you'll never see that again, right? Like this whole someone's LBJ, you'll never see LBJ again. It, 
everyone should just stop that. I don't care where it at. You'll never see it. And if you ever need to understand why, you read Robert Carroll's books and you'll understand why you'll never see LBJ again. But mm-hmm. like, uh, I think they're doing what they could do. I think that the voting rights in the police reform is going to be much more watered down than people would like it to be because you're trying to push the physical and human infrastructure bills at the same time. Now, if you didn't have the physical, you didn't have the human infrastructure bill that you're going to have to do straight down the line, then you probably could get a better, frankly, voting rights bill because they would be more pressure. Mm-hmm. But once they do this one infrastructure bill, that's all Republicans got to do and wait the clock out until 2022. Yeah, so. yeah. And I think it's going to be tough. I mean, I mean, we both know that for a lot of police reform, it, there's a lot more power at the state level to 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 fundamentally change, um, the way you know these entities operate. But I think the um, and I and I don't I'm remiss because I don't remember what the biggest thing was up on there. But in terms of the scaling back Qual- the whole the um, qualified immunity, yeah. I mean, I would argue qualified immunity on a federal level, right? But again, to your point, you, you often have states being able to, you know, kind of go above that federal edict, right? Um, and, and that's how conservatives and Republicans like it. I mean, for everybody who's listening, when they advocated states' rights, they not only said it, they meant it by getting control of state legislatures. So therefore, not only did they say it, they actually meant that they controlled the legislatures of many states, even states that a, a Democrat will win in an election. Right. Right? They'll still control the legislatures on both levels, like in Pennsylvania, right? They still control both, you know, the Senate and the General Assembly. So qualified immunity in this state is not going to move because they control it, right? So I, I just think, you know, because we want to get everything done, I think you're going to see some stuff get done. And if we decided collectively slash, I mean, people in D.C., that people want the, the physical infrastructure and then they want the human infrastructure on that side, right, then that's what we're going to get. But some of the other stuff is going to suffer in that end. Right. And there's going to be different deals cut, which people, I would argue, like I said, aren't going to like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the. Um, well, I'm I'm surprised that the I mean, I, I mean, I guess I understand why, like the infrastructure, the physical infrastructure deal is not more popular amongst uh, our conservative uh, peers, brothers and sisters, so to speak. But I know part of that is not wanting to that too many points on the board. <laughs> for, yeah, no, they're mean, particular. Like, we ain't, they, yeah. we're not you put nothing on the board, slump. Yeah, I mean, like as if they, I mean, and 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 it, it ain't it's there's not a state in the union that don't have some infrastructure infrastructure projects, yeah. You know I'm saying that need the, the largest of the federal government in terms of the, the resources to to, you know, it's for everybody that's keeping track around Flint's water situation. You you need Buku, you know, you need big bucks to redo a water system. Like, you ain't <laughs> you ain't getting that with some some municipal bonds necessarily. You know what I'm saying like you need right, right. You are gonna need like some you know federal government coming in heavy, you know, as a part of some other you know broader planning or even just like like that's who has the the purse to to fix something like that. And um. You know, I, I think in in general the idea that you know, I think uh, I know the the big thing here. The couple different congressional folks spoke on is that folks is missing the moment to get the the river crossing, you know, repaired. You know, the, the, there's two big bridges that cross the Columbia um, from Portland. One is on the east side, and that's I can't remember the name of the bridge. But that's you know a newer highway, and the other is a really old <laughs> highway that that needs the bridge that uh, you know if if the big earthquake happens, it might not make it. Um, and 
you know, there was a, a plan in place. Washington State wasn't with it, and some other you know things. And I'm, I'm definitely not saying that uh, I know all the details of, of why that that plan that that other research work failed. But ultimately, it's all tied up in, um, you know, what would be the impact in terms of northeast, north and northeast Portland of of redoing that highway. Um, there's toll stuff. There's a whole thing here with these uh, highway cap. Like it's all integrated, all mixed in together. But it's really vital to the future of this city. <laughs> you know what I'm saying that. It, and and, I, and I'm sure. I mean, I don't know if you saw track that situation, the bridge in Memphis. That basically they had to shut down uh, the bridge. I can't remember if it was the one that Highway 40 goes over, because like the bridge was breaking. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know I'm saying like, you know, it's it's not a game when infrastructure like is like met its hit its expiration date and. <clears throat> Right, because we don't want to pay for it. The thing is, you want to ride on highways during the, during, during holidays, but don't want to pay for riding on a highway, yeah. right? It's like taking the assumption that it's like you paid at the office. Yeah. Like, no, you didn't pay at the office <laughs> about this infrastructure. And, you know, when we see these beautiful pictures of these trolleys and all these fast roads in Europe, well, that's because people pay for that. Like, people yeah. shouldn't assume that they... Right. Oh, it ain't no it. special Europe. It ain't no special European government. <laughs> it's money. <laughs> you know what I mean? The Germans haven't figured. I mean, they the Germans have figured out how to have better roads. It's called you pay for it, mm-hmm. right? Like, and when even we talk about, um, you know, mass transit, which is also part of infrastructure, right? When we talk about mass transit and people want mass transit, you're going to have to pay for it. And so I think it's a really, it is really important, and especially for a lot of folks in in our community, in the black community, and black and brown community who are like, like you don't care about the infrastructure bill, but then you want more buses, right? right? You want buses to come more often in your neighborhood. Well, if you want buses to come more often in the neighborhood, going back to my point, somebody got to pay for that. It's almost like we can't be like, like Messiah. Messiah be like, yo. Like he thinks money comes from some inanimate source that is everlasting. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> it comes from us. Yeah, like, That's like there's some sort of, yeah, there's some 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 sort of like spell or some shit. Like, no, man, it comes from my pocket. <laughs> right. In the same way, if you want good roads, if you want good, uh, you want the buses and to come on time, and you want new routes. I mean, we got to pay for it, right? And if you and what I mean by that is always not out your pocket, but you know, elected officials have good strategies to figure out how to get these things, whether it's raising taxes and stuff that you will acknowledge, whether it's raising taxes and stuff that you won't acknowledge, whether it's redirection of money, it's all about what you need. And you need that physical infrastructure. Then you also need, you know, like I was saying, the, the human infrastructure of the other stuff that they need to push through mansion and, and cinema. At, out of Arizona and whatever that challenge is going to be. And this is ha- all happening too within this kind of dialogue. And I don't know if you've seen it where they talk about the rise of the anti woke Democrat with Adams winning in New York. Now they have this term, the anti woke Democrat, right? Mm-hmm. And they asked Adams in New York, they said, Are you an anti woke Democrat? He said, No. He said, I just never went to sleep, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> which I thought was a really a really good way to explain, like some of us have cared about these same issues for 30 or 35 years. Some of us didn't just arrive at caring about these issues. Yeah. Meaning some of us cared about these issues when the Democratic Party didn't give a damn about this issue. Right. And we should just, we should call a spade a spade. Yeah. Right. And so it ain't about being anti-woke when you care about safety and you care about justice to me. Right. right? Like you need to care about the justice of how people get dealt with, but you also need to care about the safety of if somebody sent a hundred shots, a spinner, if somebody got a hundred, a hundred shot bat, gun battle on a corner, right? You have to think about that and what that means. And not just the physical safety, but the broader psychological safety, right? Because even if you argue, okay, you know what? 
it ain't just about safety. No, when someone can't come outside, when people, when kids feel traumatized, that's a whole nother level of safety and belonging that you miss. There, people are not going to engage in their communities if they're scared. There's going to be a hundred shots on the corner. So I think, you know, there's just yeah. these broader challenges of what it means to try to push through good policy. Again, acknowledging that you got 15 to 18 months to push it through before which is kind of like, you ain't gonna get nothing done. That being said, I think they've done what they could do or they've done the right thing of trying to do it. It ain't like the West Wing, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not as interesting as, as as watching Toby and them, you know, argue over policy, but it is real. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, I think in a good way, there's no, there's no, I don't think there's any major flubs that like, oh man, like, well, like, why'd you do that? Um, you know, I definitely feel like, uh, well, what was it? I know people are, there's, a, there's, there's elements that are trying to, to, to push the, push the idea that like the CDC, you know, failed in this way and that way with the way all of this has happened with, with with COVID responses, which I think is sort of, I don't know, I find it ridiculous to to, to for 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 a society that is that is that is simultaneously as uninterested in public health, but then also wants the thing that's supposed to be dealing with, but like yeah, I mean, wants them to be like super dope, like super good at their jobs, <laughs> and then, but then also we want to totally not really be into public health unless it matters to me at the moment, right? Um, yeah, I mean like. It's 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 a you know it's one of those things I don't I just don't give it a lot of credit <laughs> to think about they're like ah you some of y'all I mean like I ain't saying they that they're good or bad they're saying that they that they did the world's greatest job but we was not you know as that meme that somebody I seen recently just sort of like everybody uh, folks ask it all about the rules with uh what is it, rules or something but y'all couldn't <laughs> follow no damn COVID rules for the last twelve months I can't I have to find that there be yeah you know I mean like are y'all are we serious? Yeah, you know I mean like ask all even like how how do you how would you approach this that way? But then you know, people say, oh, just wear some masks for a couple months, do this, this, and we we'll hopefully things will be better. Um, you know, I think the um I mean the other thing, I guess, I mean, I, I'm not I'm not I, I'm only gonna bring it up to say this. All hate crime legislation in the United States at its root and at its core starts with the activism and the work of black people. So please stop it. To all y'all, just well, stop. There that goes. <laughs> just stop. Stop bringing that up. I'm not even gonna say the rest of it. Just stop bringing it up because I don't know who you're helping. Yeah, you know I'm saying back to Ida B. Wells before it was even the, the concept of calling something a hate crime. <laughs> our folks from our community, professionals of many different levels, have engaged, and that is all baked into any legislation that involves uh, adding you know, a motivational modifier that is related to race and then and, and the expansion of that, you know what I mean? Or specifics of that as it pertains to any other circumstances and situations. So could y'all just cut it out? So that's all I'm saying on that. So yeah, that I, yeah, so unless you guys are mad. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm just like, you know, you ain't, you know, I, I guess the only other thing too uh, I would bring up is, you know, we talk, talk, Talking real brolic around this cybersecurity. We'll see what happens with that. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, he's talking like that. Just somebody <laughs> sitting in a cave, somebody sitting somewhere that's smarter than everybody at the federal government is creating a, a you know, some sort of poison pill right now. I mean, look, when you start holding oil companies hostage so that you can get money and then run the price of oil up, like, you're dealing with some other kind of guys. I feel like they got to go get some of them <laughs> to be able to beat some of them. Because I don't yeah. think nobody they got in government is ready to beat none of them. Yeah. Well, you know, what the uh, what is said is that, you know, we, we, we out here doing it too. We just ain't messing with <laughs> stuff that messes with the economy like that. That's true. You that's, know, that's, 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 that's the, 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 the counterpoint is sort of like, I mean, I, I think the prime example, I, I believe, 
some of whatever was done to sort of derail Iran's nuclear program. A lot of it was, you know, cyber, cyber attack stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know I mean, it, that's, that's what they say in these streets, but he talk a real brolic, like, you know what I mean? Awesome. Like, you know, talk crazy about me on the internet. I'm gonna find you in real life. <laughs> <laughs> like you go I heard what you said on the Facebook <laughs> you know what I'm saying I'm find you you know what I'm saying like hopefully you know hopefully things will be be better um cool 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 so the other thing situation we wanted I wanted to touch base on um and and I and I'll, I'll start it off or, or set it up so the sister the young sister and I hope I said her name appropriately Shikari uh, Richardson, you know what I mean? Got busy, super busy on the uh, on the 100 right here in Oregon at the Olympic trials. Um, later came up uh, positive for marijuana, which USADA still um, doesn't allow. <laughs> and it gave her a 30-day sanction. Um, the other extenuating circumstances is she found out from a damn reporter that her mother had passed, who she... You know, had a um, you know, from at least the reports I've read, you know, a challenging, you know, relationship with, and was probably definitely in a in a weird space to get that, and especially to get it in that way. Um, and somewhere in there, imbibed in in the marijuana, and um, you know, a, a whole conflagration of of opinions and perspectives that have that have ensued since. Um, I, I want to say one thing when we get off, and you know, I support. The, the sister and hope that she, you know, get what she needs. And, and I would tell her she was in Oregon. It was all forms of the marijuana that one would have, could have accessed. So, you know, from edibles to pills, you know, well, not maybe not pills, but the smoking, the vaporizers, all kinds of stuff. And if in a moment of need and grief, you know what I'm saying? She reached for that, you know, it, it, knowing the, the rules and the situation, um, you know, it happens. And I and I I dug the way she spoke on it for herself in that, look, I'm a, you know, they got me. I'm gonna take this sanction. I probably should have did, did this differently. Um, you know, but the world we, we you know, because I don't want to get too much into this the, the the debate area of this before just acknowledging, man, I respect her for just you know, doing, you know, being stand up about the situation and, and I steadfast will be cheering for you, sis, wherever you at and kill them at the world championships. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it'll be two before the next Olympics, but smash them. You know what I mean? And then come the next Olympics and you get your gold in. So yeah, where do you want to start with that? <laughs> you know, I, I think it's just an interesting conversation now to think about in America, right? Like even outside, like I don't, you know, I think a lot of times we personalize things in America mm-hmm. to the benefit and to the detriment. So what I want to say is not about cis per se. It's about the broader conversation of you have a thing that's being sold legally in states, but it's still not federally accepted. You have you have a literally billion dollar business that is flourishing in a country, yet you can't use American banks to do it. Right? Mm-hmm. You have every rich person anywhere in any state where it's legal invested. I mean, you have UPMC here, you have UPMC, you have the largest the second largest employer in the state of Pennsylvania, it totally invested. In cannabis, right? You got Jay Z selling fifty dollar joints, <laughs> right? Like in the open. You got burner in them up in ca- a burner on um, having every rapper, basketball player, and anything else with their own strain, right? Sold out in the open, mm-hmm. but a person takes that same thing. And the federal government says it's bad, right? So that's where I start. Yeah. I'm not starting with sis in the decision she made. I actually thought, frankly, 
But Biden made a good statement. Everyone said, he said, the rules are the rules. But then he said, but the rules, the problem is we need to look at the rules, Mm -hmm. right? So if you say, hey, sis knew she shouldn't have smoked and she made a decision to smoke, she did it with full knowledge. And that's why she copped to it. And to your point, I honor and respect that she copped to it, right? Like, I did it. I was going through, I was going through something and I did it and I knew it and that's what it is, right? But on a broader level, why was it so easy for her to get? <laughs> why is it being sold? In, in I mean, New York City just legalized it, Chicago legalized it, right? You're talking about billion dollar markets that someone could easily take. That now the U- USA USADA says like it's wrong because it's a you know they don't agree with it anymore even though we know it's not used it's not a, perform- a performance enhancing drug shit caffeine would be more of a pro- performance enhancing drug than cannabis yeah so I think it's really about our entire system and figuring out why does America allow itself to be so goofy. <laughs> Man, this is the man. best way I can describe. Like, why do we allow ourselves to be so goofy that, like, we're having a dialogue about something that's sold at a store, but you're saying it's like a substance that then an athlete can't use, but it's sold. It's sold in any place you can find something. But then again, other stuff that we know are substances that actually enhance your performance are legal, and it's just a broader, to me the way that America is going to have to grow up and stop being almost like the the Puritan cousin of the world while doing everything in there, right? While doing everything in America, but being a Puritan acting place. Right. Well, He's just the representation of that. Or like she yeah. just caught it in the web of the goofiness. Yeah, and that's why I you know, like I said I wanted to, to to give her some props and, and kind of move to to the conversation about the rules, right? And how we deal with rules and and bad rules, right? And rules that are rooted in decisions that really didn't have a lot to do with athletic performance, but totally with sort of cultural expectations and who you thought you could limit and 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 a perceived like social stigma that you know i mean for those that don't know the, the marijuana you know cannabis in in the u.s was associated with you know the black and brown communities and 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 an indicator or seen as an indicator in the past of some you know basically some some low 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 character reefer madness and all that and so all of that is baked into any of these rules around controlling it and for those of us who were young in the 80s when you had different uh really when a lot of these, like, especially for the controlled substances, not so much even sports, like, so cocaine and, and weed and whatever else being tested, you know, within the world of sports and, and other forms of employment, you know what I'm saying, as this, like, cultural war piece around, you know, fighting drug use. Like, it, it don't have a lot to do with actually improving any sport. <laughs> it ain't got nothing to do with, um, you know, it's it's totally a, a culture thing that them rules is in there. It, it, you know, like now you could make, you know, you probably could make some sort of argument around the medical challenges of, you know, or like if that comes up, that's you should have a conversation. Somebody come up with a cocaine in their system. We should probably have a conversation about that, young boy. You all right, man? Like, you know what I'm saying? Opioids, whatever have you. But the idea that it it's there to protect the athlete. You know what I mean, and protect the the, the integrity of this of the sporting activity is 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 ridiculous because it's not. Like it just it just isn't. Um and it it was a confounding thing though in terms of what to do, right? Because you have this dialogue that's like, well, the rule is bad, so therefore we should do something to subvert the rule before we've actually taken the time to get the rule out the way. So we should just not abide by the rule, right? Right. At this moment, because you know, eventually we're gonna get rid of this rule. And then my thing is like you know, you know, and I don't always want to be slippery slope, man, but I'm like, I don't know if that's a good decision. <laughs> like, like if there's some, if there's some exemption form, there's some process. Yeah. Go for it. Right. If there's some pre pre-existing, but like one 
someone is going to manipulate that situation uh, probably in the, in the long run to the detriment of a sister like Shikari. You know what I'm saying? Right. They, right. They're going to be like, oh, well, we should throw out this other thing because of these other stuff or you should promote. Yeah, you know I mean, like, you know, for whatever you one may feel about rules, it, it is good sometimes to go like, you know, is this a good process to change the rule, right? To just go, well, we're just going to ignore the rule and let her run. You know what I mean? And um, I, 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 my, my question becomes like, how does this still a thing? How is this still the rule? We're like six, seven years down the road, you know, even the NFL is all be sort of like, ah, you know, we, we kind of testing for weed. I mean, you know, <laughs> we're trying to wink wink fellas right i'm saying wink winkity winks double all the winks and you know what i mean i think uh and i know there's a uh, stuff around like the threshold levels i think i think their threshold level is is real real wacky or either it's real low or real i can't remember which one that they're even testing for but it gets into a thing of like there's a process to change the rules and why is it no so especially all of us who suddenly care and I like to pick on this us about track because we don't care about track till we care about track but none of us was caring about track you know the last three years or four years when somebody could I'm sure there's an annual meeting where they look at the rules and there's someone who's probably going yeah we need to move these 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 cannabis rules these cannabis rules are outdated they don't make no sense and then other controlled substances but that's administrative organizing work that doesn't isn't glamorous or fun and and I think maybe people think, well, if the federal government just does this, then USADA got to do that. And it's like, well, not necessarily. Not at all. Like the USADA is its own, it's its own regulatory entity that's around a sport that you choose to be involved with. It ain't, you know, it, yes, it will, it will be different if, you know, there'll be more credence to the idea, but like someone that's involved in that world needs to do the what? The legwork <laughs> so that we didn't get the situation. So that's the part that frustrates me is that like no, he I think, wasn't I think tuned in right. or caring, and then it's like, oh, that happened, man. Them rules is bogus, man. That's bullshit. Man. And then we go back to not giving a damn. Hey, that's the thing. <laughs> and then we will go back to not giving a damn really quickly, like because besides everyone's you know owed to owed to her and owed to her black girl magic and running real fast, then it'll be like this is wrong and see the white man, and then it'd be like. All right, we on to something else. And it's like, yeah, but if you think this is important, this is not just important for her. This is important for a kid that is over 18 or whatever the legal age is and then smokes and then can't get a job, right? Mm -hmm. Like all those things. Like there there are many more people jammed up, frankly, due to cannabis than her. She she said it, like, I'll see you in two years. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like, I ain't got nothing but time. There's a right. whole bunch of other people that's really jammed up because of decisions they're making around cannabis and the confusion in America about it being used as a revenue source, but still not dealing with the rules of it. Right. And so, right. like to your point, there's just a broader rule conversation. And the cognitive dissonance of how America as a country, as a federal government, and then state government and city and local governments are treating cannabis in regard to not, you know, you could argue, do you want it to be Amsterdam or not? That's not my point here. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it ain't about being Amsterdam, but it needs to be fair and clear. And right now, it's not fair and clear. Yeah, no, no. And that that is... is I don't know if people are tr- really tracking what's happening, right? Like, I, I think people are in one well, well, I think a lot of folks are looking at it sort of like either from their one, some people are you know, looking at it from a like, I know marijuana's been legal my whole life, but I've been involved, if, especially if they're cannabis, if there's someone who uses cannabis regularly, they're like, I've been, I've been, and it hasn't stopped me from using it, <laughs> right? So, therefore, like in their mind, it's quasi legal, right? Like in their right. mind, it's it's cool, it's whatever. Right. But it's like, no, actually, you know, you got, we got to, there's like a lot of legwork to be done. And then in states, once these rules are changed and the mm-hmm. states treat this way, you know, and, and we're, we're moving towards it. It's going to be, I mean, I, I I think it probably would be, I mean, one, the, the, was it, uh, who's who, I forget who 
thanks to schedule one thing. I know the last time they had a chance to change it, they didn't, but I know it'll, I think it'll be sometime in the next year or year and a half. It would be in consideration again, you know, at, at any time it could be, it could be moved off schedule one. <laughs> right. And, you know, it seems like something that would definitely probably happen depending on how the next election shakes out. You know what I'm saying? If, if Democrats keep uh, uh hold of, 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 of one of the houses or both, I, I would I would expect that you know full legalization of marijuana and, and it's not like really that the conservatives are really against it again I think they just don't want to give them the wins up <laughs> to, to to the other team you know what I'm saying right. but it's you know it's going to be a whole wild thing when that happens but I, I just I, I I I was more upset that folks don't know how the rules work within these different entities. And even though one may, may, may tap into the reality of understanding the back, the backstop of, of racism and how it operates within them. Um, you know, th- there's a whole bunch of other stuff here. Like that, everything that happened here is the systemic factors that impacted that young woman's life and, and how, where she was at and policy factors, but the, the specifics of, of why this isn't different and why there isn't the, the provisions in place are all things that are actually were actionable work that either people involved in, in that world could could do more to get us excited or we could do more to be paying attention that these are all the different ways these rules show up. Like I said, I'm still, one of my, my own personal goals is to learn more about what is the structural backstop. Like really, like, is it the insurance underwriting that where this stuff hits the rubber meets the road, like, cause there's definitely the cultural piece, but at some point then there's a, there's, there's, there's some hard thing <laughs> that has probably been cooked in when it comes to, you know, substance use testing, when it comes to, you know, criminal background that I think also has to be back burnt, you know, in the language. I just, I'm not sure where, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because even if you do a ban, you know, cities like here, they had a really great ban to box. I mean, in terms of getting people not basically dismissing people for their criminal record, you know, before if if you really if you really want them, then you test test the criminal record. You know, I mean, and then, you know, depending on your your stipulations and all that, you know, you do what you're doing. But my question is, like, if the if the people, everyone involved feels safe going forward with this individual but it's still like, well, they got this record, so we just can't. What is the thing that is creating the fulcrum? Is it, if it is just the risk that then if there is an incident later that there'll be some negligence claim or whatever, it seems to me there would be a structural remedy you could put in place legally to go, yeah, we acknowledge it and we took the risk and here's, you know, if it didn't work out, you know, here's, here's, here's how we protect ourselves from a liability perspective. But I, I just don't, I feel like with this, situation folks would fast forward into that they're like oh well they should just change the rules because it's a bad rule and let it run and i'm like they 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 just they can't just do that <laughs> and, and then if they did do that you know is that really how we want entities to make decisions um you know and 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 what are you know is it you know sort of like getting the outcome you want but you followed bad process and and I and I'm a big advocate of if you're doing bad, if you have bad process and you're getting good results, yay for you. But eventually you're gonna well, get bad it's only results. a matter of time before yeah. someone gets a bad outcome, right? Right. It's only a matter of time before someone says, like, okay, you're probably about to get a bad outcome here because you lucked up getting a good outcome with a bad process, right? And again, that's what I'm saying. That's the larger part of like whether it's USADA, whether it's what we got going on nationally, what is the process for how you're dealing with something? So you have in all these cities legalizing something that they can't take this to the bank. If you and I want to start a business tomorrow, we could not go to a bank to get a loan. Yep. So how do you have a, 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 a literally a product that is legal in a city, that is legal in a state to sell as inter, in, at least interstate commerce, right? If not intrastate commerce, because that's also part of the issue. Mm-hmm. But interstate commerce that you can't go to a bank for. 
that same thing is is legal to take, but not legal to go and do your job with. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, it, seems like, it seems like it should be a bigger priority to figure this out <laughs> before yeah, passing I mean, these. <laughs> yeah, because you're going to, regardless, even if I know people sometimes don't like to hear this. But yeah, you're going to have people who are going to be under an influence of something that you could argue that's never stopped alcohol. But here's the difference. There's still a rule that someone can say to you, if you're above this level of alcohol, you're going to, you are literally may go to jail, right? Yeah. Your blood alcohol content is to a degree where you are going to jail. And so all of us know that if that is the case, that can be an outcome. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, every job out? I've worked for the last thirty years has told me if you if you get in have an accident, whether that's a driving accident or you fall out the chair while on the job, when they go, they're gonna do a drug. They're gonna do a drug screening, and if you're on the wrong side of that drug screening, you are not protected. You know what I'm saying? Now, whether that's fair or unfair, I think is a good conversation to have, but. I've known that, you know, what, so that means whether it was alcohol, which is totally legal at the, you know, most of that time and marijuana, which is, you know, newly legal, um, you know, or cannabis, you know what I mean? So that if I was, you know, I, I fell over in a chair, you know what I mean? And that's kind of weird, awkward fall and broke my wrist and they take me down and they check and it's like, yo, you, my man's uh blood alcohol is like, he just had two, two cold ones. I'm going to be in the jam. You know what I'm saying? The same way I would if it came up that it, you know, it appeared that I I had just, you know, you know, was was currently at the moment high. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Maybe not, you know, not just I had marijuana, I had THC in my system. You know what I'm saying? Which would be, you know, if I had THC last night, that ain't THC this morning. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, whatever the case may be. And I, I think that I think that it is important for um for folks that are going into the business, uh, folks that are users, you know, that, that imbibe to, to actually get involved in like the policy discussion so that there is a clarity. Cause I mean, we've even had, I've had, I've been in, you know, some burger meetings in this last year as it's changed out here where people have asked like, yo, like, well, you know, there's, you know, it's legal here and there's, I definitely will use. And if, if we just did a random drug test just for drug testing, I might come up with, like what what where would I be wrong at? <laughs> like would I be right. wrong any THC the way that it's always been, you know, when you get a new job and like, yeah, you got to take drug screen, man. <laughs> like if a drug screen shows any THC, then then you just it can't take the job. Even if you hadn't smoked, you know what I'm saying, or imbibed you know, in two weeks, but it's still in your system because we know it's like 30 some days that THC could be in your system. And even like I said, it's legal, like it's not like it's not like you did it like a rebel. You yeah. went to a store and bought it. Bought it. <laughs> and there's a lot of stores here. And it's a lot it's, of I, I, stores I, I, that you can go and buy every variety of the thing. But then someone tell you that it's no, I think I and, and again, I think for a lot of young people, and I'm gonna say a lot of young people in America across the board, but specifically I'm thinking about young black and brown people, specifically in our in the community, in the urban and rural communities. Because it, it does matter. And there are black and brown folks in rural communities. I want everyone to remember that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like we are, we are not exclusively urban people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, no matter what TV and Hill Street Blues showed you, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like we are, we are people who also live in the country. So like acknowledging that that's the case, what does it mean for this kind of thing? How are we thinking about it? And I think people have been on the money side of it, but not the legal side of it. People have been on the like, people got locked up for selling weed, they deserve to get money off of it, versus many more people who should be impacted by what does this mean for employment? What does this mean for, you know, working? What does this mean for you know, situations you find yourself in, you know, in your family, like if you're selling it on the great quote unquote great market, which is a whole nother challenge. So I agree with you. I think this is just another, this is another level of conversation that needs to be had in the system. I think dealt with it. 
you know, she was a she was a scholar and a gentlewoman, you mm-hmm. know what I mean, <laughs> of how she dealt with it. But there's a bigger picture, and you know, it would take you just to be able to open up the bigger picture so we can talk about it. Yeah. All right. All right. So, you know, I'm and I, and I just I just say this for I guess because I know some of y'all states is just it's just it's just starting. You could get I don't even know the hour some of these joints, but you could you get we you get some you can get some cannabis, pardon me. It's not weed, it's cannabis. You can get you a cannabis product. Uh, you know, with the provisions of almost any time and for damn sure within a mile of, of that stadium <laughs> where she ran the race. I ain't even gotta be down there, but I guarantee you, you could throw a stone and be like, oh, I can get some weed, right? I get some, I can get I can get a edible right there. I can get, you know, there's varieties, it's high THC, the high cannabinoids, it's all kinds of stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's stuff that don't really get you high, it just helps you with muscle relaxation. It's all kinds of shit out here, man. Like it's a whole, it's a whole real industry, and it it's bananas that you would still have these rules in place, but then also us like it's it's not a bigger driving point, um, especially as a community that that I would say is a maybe at least more invested. <laughs> Feels like we more of us should be involved in this conversation. You know, what I mean, even people that maybe are not, you know, heavy active users, but just understanding the impact. You know, what I mean, from like I said, work work opportunities, you know, people using, you know, for 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 stress management, pain management. All sort of stuff. Like it, it just, I, I, I think there's a lot of work to be done. So, much love to the sister, though. Oh, she, you know, what I mean, you bounce back. You know, what I'm saying, like rubber band. You know, what I mean, yeah, right back on, get back on them. So, yeah, all right. Well, I mean, I think that's it. I think we, I think we hey. covered the basis for today. But Bi- Biden could always be doing better. He's doing mm-hmm. all right job. Yeah. And y'all need to think about this when y'all smoking and letting these kids smoke. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I mean. y'all just <laughs> yes, please. They, they like you know get get involved if you if you engage in the cannabis use on whatever level you do, man. Take take a take a spin through your local policy conversations, please. Like whoever, and if you want, definitely our community to 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 benefit. We want people gonna need your voice and your presence and your and your donations and 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 you know and your testimony. To get the rules to be where the, where where we would want them to be for us to get to get get to get repaired from the harm. So, all right. So with that, I say peace. My man, peace. Thank you for listening to Good Brothers. Thank you to my good brother, I'm Majestic. Thank you to you, the listener. We try to record as often as we can, uh, weekly at sometimes, bi-weekly at others. But in all things, we appreciate. Uh, you sticking with the, uh, the Good Brothers and uh, the Ask Your Head podcast in general. Uh, peace and love to the sister Shikari Richardson, um, you know, on all other fronts as it relates to our national uh, politics and what have you. Hey, man, everybody out there, we can make good choices. And, um, you know, policy is not just something that exists in the hills and comes to visit us, you know, every four years when you care about the election. So. You know, get involved, get engaged, and it's more than just about voting for people. So, in any event, um, you know, in the summer months, be well, stay cool. If you want to support the podcast, you know what to do. Share, uh, become a patron, uh, go to the Etsy shop, buy a sweatshirt or something. You know what I mean? Find Justice Raji on Cash App and shoot me a Tenzo. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Whatever works for you. But in any event, I'm going to let us go, and I'll see you next time. Peace.